We are locked in with the guy from Locked On Cardinals, Alex Clancy, joining us now. Alex, real quick, how was your Halloween? I got my leftover Pizza Planet hat from Toy Story, which which I understand was not your thing growing up. It wasn't. I played sports, Cam. Um, we all know. played sports. <laughs> I, I Come on, be- you can't enjoy a Disney movie when you were seven. I was. I watched Lion King probably two hundred fifty times. I think. I think it was more Disney. Uh, yeah, Reese's peanut butter cups abound last night. The the excuse uh, I have to eat them every year. So yes, it was fun. There we go. Good Halloween, man. All right, let's get to it. What do you make of this match of this week against the Bears for the Cardinals? Season defining. I mean, because they actually won some games. I Cam bigger than talk- last week. Bigger than. Yeah, because it, there was no safety net last week. There was no safety net the week before. If they would have lost one or both of those games, we'd be having are they trading everybody conversations. Now they won both of those games, and we're in a situation where if they get into their bye week, week 11, 5 and 5, that's a win. 4 and 4, that's a win. So going into Sunday, I think it's more about execution and future pacing things like can Kyler and Marv continue this evolution of their relationship or was last week a one-off i think that's the biggest thing for me statement game marv and k1 if they can lead this team against a really good defense uh, to get a win at home move to five and four basically what you're just saying is consistency now like we've we've consistently seen losing for so many years they have now finally kind of debunked that in a sense where they've won back-to-back games for the first time in three years but now let's let's start stacking things not just stacking wins but stacking consistency throughout the team. This team, this organization was not capable of three come from behind wins in four weeks a a handful of years ago. This is a very new feeling. It's a new thing where it's like, you know what? They're not out of any game, irrespective of what it looks like through one quarter or through halftime. And with this defense the way it is and the way the offense was able to carry the reins last week and Kyler Moore was able to march from 73 yards for a game-winning field goal as time expired, it's a new feeling. So, yes, consistency is new. The way they're doing it is new. Now, if they can remove the cardiac, you know, in front of Cardinals and they can actually play for 60 minutes, maybe with a lead against a rookie who's only played a handful of games in the NFL, that'd be a nice new wrinkle to see. You're asking the Cardinals to remove the chaos? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Who knows? That's not gonna happen. Maybe, maybe, maybe JG's onto something. Maybe they're onto something. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of the Bears? They're beatable, and that's something we didn't we didn't know where the wins were gonna come from this season. We didn't know what the team was gonna look like. We didn't know what the evolution of of Caleb Williams was gonna be. You know, when the season started, um, they're beatable. The offensive line, it's not Swiss cheese, but it's like cheese that's fermenting right now. Like, it's not all the way there yet. So regardless of Darius Robinson not playing yet and the pass rush being what it is or isn't for the most part, they're still able – they're going to be able to pressure the quarterback. And I think cutting the head off the snake is the best way to beat this team who is another team that's chock full of of skill position players on offense that that are, you know, fringe Pro Bowl level. But I think getting after Caleb Williams is the big step here, winning time of possession and not letting the defense just eat their lunch. Alex, to me, like, the biggest thing, just keep being that identity that you kind of established. Like, you're going to wear teams down playing that way. Is that sustainable? You know, talk with people over the last couple of weeks. I'm not sure because <clears throat> because you're grinding it out every game and you're, it's coming down to a field goal at the end. Like, that's that's a tough lane to play in every week. But then again, if your identity is this tough physical team, like, you take it to a team like the Bears who really haven't been popped like that yet – I, you know, that to me is the thing. Keep to your identity and you're going to be in this football game no matter what. Yeah. Or if I mean, you get after the quarterback or don't get after the quarterback. Yeah. The, and But a lot of it's going to be on the offensive side of the ball. So so you've got Jalen Johnson and Montez Sweat. They've got some they've got some stud defensive players. The one thing that I've been focusing on after the win last week was when will Drew Petzing and Kyler Murray officially have the these are the two design runs. They're going to break the defenses back. There's going to be one. There's going to be two. It doesn't have to be a lot. You don't want Kyler Murray running the ball 10 times a game with design runs. But they need to figure out which one, the San Francisco 50-yard touchdown run, they caught everybody by surprise. The defense was on their heels the remainder of the game. Like, that's what the Cardinals have not been able to unlock yet in its entirety. You don't want Kyler Murray to run the ball a lot, but when he does in a design fashion, you want the defense to be looking the other way. And that's something that the offense would be completely unlocked if they were able to find just that those one or two spots. And they could be checks at the line. 
They don't have to be in the first 15 plays. It could be, you know, midway through the third quarter where they're looking one way and Kyler takes off for 10, 12, 14 yards. It doesn't have to be a, a house call. Just enough to get opposing defenses on their heels so they can, you know, run their offense how they want to. Yeah, I think they waited to the third quarter when he broke off that long run against the Chargers. I did like the call late, like put the ball in his hands, third down. I mean, what was it? Yeah, third down, moving the sticks at the end of the game right as the clock was expiring, you know, before the field goal last week. And he juked like three or four defenders for the first down to keep that clock moving. Like those are the plays I, I think I want to see a little bit earlier in game, to your point, to get them to back off a little bit. Yeah, one thing I don't really understand, it's kind of an anomaly, is Kyler Murray was drafted top 10 in baseball, right, to the A's. He can't slide worth a damn on an NFL field. I, he's like like all the other quarterbacks. Tom Brady could slide better than him. Kyler does this barrel roll like we're starting to see a former ASU quarterback, Jaden Daniels, do, I think in an effort to not subject themselves to a late hit. But he's doing this barrel roll. He did that on third and four. It's not a barrel roll. It, it's kind of a, it's I'm just going to jump and roll after the first downs marked. Watch the tape. He could slide like an adult, and I, I don't understand why that's a huge zero to one disconnect. But that's neither here nor there. Kyler made a, a, a comment this week when he was talking about uh, he brought up baseball. You know, they were asking him questions about Caleb Williams, and um, you know, hey, did you know the pressure? What it was going to be like to be that first overall pick? When did you feel it? Blah blah blah. And he threw out something from Game One against the Lions. He goes, you know, paraphrasing. He was like, I, I'm sure everybody thought I should have gone back and played baseball. <laughs> Halftime of that first game against the Lions, year one. They were down. I, I think they – did they win that game? They came back and won that they game. Tied. Again. They tied it. I knew it. Yeah, tied it. But yeah. Kyler Murray led him on a, a game tied drive at the end there. I think he threw a pass to Fitz, either for a touchdown or two-point conversion there at the end there to to tie it all up. But he, he made that baseball joke, so it's funny you bring up baseball. Maybe we ask him next week. Hey, Kyler, you just watched the World Series. Come on, man. Slide a little bit. Uh, all right, we heard Monty – on the uh, radio this morning, Monty Osford on the radio Friday asked about the uh, pass rush. There was reports this week that obviously they were fielding calls or trying to make calls for a pass rusher. To me, that's not news. It would be news if they're not doing that. So there's always going to be reports out there. Monty always has this roundabout way of answering questions. You don't really get a lot out of him. In your eyes, Alex, should they trade for a pass rusher? And really, should they and are they going to? I feel like are two different questions. It would be against all conventional wisdom to think that they would. I mean, that's not his plan, it seems. Now, with that, okay. should they? Cam, this is another thing that we haven't been used to in you know the last four or five seasons, opportunities and possibilities. They can trade for whoever they want. They can trade for whoever they want. They've got the money. They've got the picks. They don't need to get any younger. So if they want to trade and call the Raiders, be like, hey, Tom Tedesco, uh, what do you want for Max Crosby? We'll give it to you. Like, they can do that. If they want to trade for Dexter Lawrence, even though he came out and said he's not going anywhere, like, these are, you know, these are hypotheticals. But the beauty of this is they won't have to bend over backwards to make something happen. It just depends on if the right, you know, the right offer comes up. They call a lowly franchise. They're like, hey, Miles Garrett, we'll give you a first-round pick and a third-round pick. He's okay. not getting a first-round. Like, I listen, veterans, very few veterans, in when you look at trades – have commanded first-round picks mm -hmm. in trades. Veterans are never worth what people think on the open market. And then when the trade goes through, they're like, oh, that's it. That's all it took it was a fifth-round pick, fourth-round yeah. pick, a third-round pick. I think you could get Miles Garrett for a third-round pick. It's a massive contract, and the Browns want out of all that money. You see what they're about to build in Cleveland? There's no way they want to be paying Miles Garrett and Deshaun Watson moving forward when they can win on some of these budget contracts that they already have. Right. And, no, and it, it, it's as an exercise, just a conversation. I've been doing it on the podcast all week. It's like just this is uncharted territory as compared to the last 10 years at the end of 2022. It's a completely different thought process. They're actually relevant now. They show up to games differently. They're doing the little things right. It's like if you told me that they traded for Max Cross, I'd be like, OK, they pulled it off. It's possibilities, Pam. It's a different organization with Monty and JG here. Some may not like it. Some may think it's boring. They weren't supposed to – the over-under to win games, I think, was four and a half this year or six and a half. I think it was six and a half. I depending, think it was six. Depending yeah. on where it was. It's like they're ahead of schedule with no defensive talent from the veteran perspective aside from, you know, their two linebackers in the middle and Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. I think we all would have signed up for four and four coming out of that brutal stretch to start the year. Their schedule, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me. It's one of the easiest schedules in football moving forward. 
one of the easier schedules in football the rest of the way after really facing one of the toughest schedules the first eight weeks of the year. There's real opportunities for the Cardinals to get to eight wins, maybe more, and compete for a playoff spot. Alex, we'll get you out here on this. Do they win? Do they beat the Bears? I will say this. It is going to be a very dominant Chicago crowd. Cardinal fans know this. I'm not telling people anything they don't know. Um, as one Cardinal fan put it to me, this was the game that I made all my money back on my season tickets this year. So just get ready, folks. They're coming. Yeah, and I think that the Cardinals do win. I mean, their, their two biggest wins this year have been on the road. So, you know, you take that and you're like, listen, I don't think – I think the offense is at the point of no return at this point. I think we saw something in Miami. It's not the best defense, I think, but I think they were giving up 150 yards passing a game. Like, it was it was a low number, and Kyler Murray doubled that. Like, I think the Cardinals get a win. It's methodical. It could be James Conner ugly, or it could be Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, to the next level. And I, I would bet on the latter. Like, I think this is something where it's probably going to get bracketed. They're probably going to have Jalen Johnson um, um, targeting, uh, you know, um, mirroring him. But – they found something last week that was organic and natural. And it doesn't matter what the defense is. If it's the right play call, Kyler gets the right amount of time. The Cardinals can be able to put up some points, and I think they will on Sunday. Alex, I always appreciate the time. The hair, man. It's just, it doesn't it's move. The angle. It's just, it doesn't move. It looks great. We'll <laughs> Thanks, talk next buddy. week, buddy. Thanks, man. All right, man.